Welcome everyone, this is Izzy at Minerva. In today's video, we are going to talk you through how to use your bespoke body block to make a really simple wrap skirt. Now, for the purpose of this video, we're just going to use our basic skirt block, which is the one with the darts and that's fully fitted. However, you may want to experiment with this technique once we've shown it to you, and you may want to uh, use your A-line skirt or um, your flared skirt or any of the other skirt types that we've shown you to um, make them into a wrap skirt. This technique is incredibly versatile and once you've kind of figured it out in your head and worked it out you can just transform any other type of skirt into this beautiful wrap feature. Now as always with this series we're literally just going to show you the technique of how to draft out the wrap skirt but um, you may well want to have a look at our waistband series where we look at how to add waistbands, different shapes of waistbands and different types of waistbands uh, onto your skirt block so that you can create a full and finished skirt however you like. Okay, let's get straight into it. So to start off with, we've got our normal plain standard skirt block. As usual with this series, I've printed off my own skirt block um, using my software on my computer. However, you will have traced over your own skirt block. So yours will look slightly different. So I want you to trace over not one, but two copies of your skirt front piece, because effectively we're just gonna flip it over like this so that we can see the full skirt. If you need to, grab a piece of masking tape and just secure your two pieces so they're lined up beautifully. For the purpose of this video, I'm just going to add two uh, buttonholes to my wrap skirt, so on either side and um, by the side seams, so that I can wrap over and um, attach the two pieces together using buttons. However, you may well want to draft out some wrap details, some ties, uh, you may want to use your waistband feature to incorporate that as well. So just have a little think about how you're going to create your finish and your wrap aspect. So effectively, I'm gonna put one button there and one button there. I want these buttons to be located quite close up to the top of the waistband, just so that it's gonna sit really nicely at that point. So I'm just going to locate my button and draw a line um, across here just as a reference at 1.5 from the top of the waistband and 1.5 from the side seam here. So that's whereabouts I want my a button or my button hole and just going to repeat the same process on this side. So we know where those two points are, that is going to be where our buttons are going to go on our left and right hand side of the garment. The next thing I'm going to decide is where my hemline is going to sit. So for this one, instead of having it on my knee, I'm just going to raise it up a little bit just so you can see what the difference is. Again, for you, pop your hemline wherever you want. You may want to do a maxi skirt, um, you may want to do a mid axi or a midi. <laughs> just go ahead and choose. It's your design choice wherever you want. For me, I'm just going to raise that up 18 centimetres and let's see what that does for the skirt. Now our opening on our skirt is going to be on the left hand side. That's always where the zip is for um, a garment so we're going to pop that uh, opening on the left hand side and that's where the skirt is going to wrap over and attach in at that point. So it may be that you just want to draw, choose a line whether you want to choose a curve or a diagonal or bring something like straight down however you want that to look. I'm going to curve mine in a little bit, give it a bit of an angle. Um, what I am going to do though is make sure that I'm hitting the edge up here at 1.5 away from the top just so I'm allowing enough space here for my buttonhole and button because I don't want to interrupt that. You could bring that line further across to make it a bit more exaggerated which might look quite fun or you could also pick up on the line of that dart, bring that across. I mean there are just so many different design choices that you can make at this point. So let's do something a little bit radical and bring it a little bit further across like this. 
So if you imagine we've got a skirt, there's one bit here, we're gonna wrap this bit over. We've now drafted what the wrap over bit looks like, but we need to have a look at the bit underneath that's going to sit against our legs um, before the other bit wraps over. So we need to look at how what this bit looks like here. So we're gonna do that now, and I'm gonna use a different color pen to draw that onto our block. So the skirt underneath is going to, um, is going to wrap under at this point and attach in at the button there. All I want to do here is just create a really nice straight perpendicular line from my hem up to that point at 1.5 away from the waistline. I'm just going to draw a nice neat straight line. Let's just call that the underskirt line as a little reference and we can call this the top skirt line. You can label this as button if you want. Fantastic. Fantastic. So we've now marked out all of our line markings on the full um, skirt front, which is great. We're now going to grab a piece of tracing paper and trace over the um, top side of the skirt, the one that wraps over, and then also the underside that wraps under. And both those two pieces are going to look different. So we're going to have two separate pieces of patterns for the skirt front. Let's do that now. I'm just going to add a 1.5 centimeter seam allowance to the edge the top skirt line edge so I can fold that under. It may well be that you want to add a more detailed facing to your wrap skirt so that if it opens up a little bit and sort of flaps open then you've got um, a bit of um, fabric on both sides which is the right side if that makes sense. <laughs> and at the top along the waistband I'm just going to add a 1.5 centimetre seam allowance. Again your waistband may require you to do something different but we're just looking at the sort of technique of drafting out the wrap aspect. So we're not focusing on waistbands. We'll be doing that in another series. It's worth just marking your dart at this point too. Now we're drafting out the skirt top, so the top skirt line, and we're following the top skirt line here, so this is the bit that wraps over. So th this part of the skirt is gonna tie into the back at this seam here. So we're now just going to offset our seam allowance from the side seam of our skirt block, not from the straight underskirt line. Now at this point, we know that we need a button hole on the top skirt because the top front skirt, because we want the button from the underskirt to pop through. Now if our button is going to go here, our button hole needs to extend backwards away from that line there. So my button was about 1.5 centimeters long. So I'm gonna draw a line that is 1.5 centimeters long starting at where I want my buttonhole to be. If I put the button in the middle of the buttonhole, it's never gonna sit there, is it? Because the fabric is gonna pull away to the point where the um, thread is attaching the button to the garment underneath. But if I put the button, if I know the button is going here on that cross line here, then my buttonhole, the extent that it's going to be pushed up against when it stretches out around my tummy, around my waist, is going to be that it's going to hold it in place at that point. I can thread it through, pull the fabric a little bit tighter while I thread the button through, but I want it to be sat at the edge there. Now the same is going to go on the skirt front on this side here. So we're going to have two buttons which are poking through from the underskirt up to the front. So I'm just going to draw a line once again that is 1.5 centimeters long. You check out your button and mark what's appropriate for you on that. So the only final thing that we need to do is just to annotate our pattern piece. We've already added the grain line. So let's label this up and we will call this a wrap skirt. Over skirt front, cut one right side facing up. And that means that we want um, the right side of our fabric facing up as we cut this pattern piece out. We're going to lay this pattern piece on top of our fabric with the right side up. And that just ensures that this, is, this will be cut out correctly. Don't forget with the hemline, you can add your hemline, whatever you want it to be. And then you can cut out the pattern piece. You may also just want to add a little notch where the hip line is. And then you can cut out your pattern piece.
Okay, moving on to our underskirt pattern piece. Uh, this one, we're following our green line at this point for this line, but our skirt of our underskirt is going to attach to this side seam at that point. So you just mark in your hemline and don't, make, and don't forget to add your seam allowance if you're doing that. Draw in the left side seam because the skirt's going to attach to the back at that point. This is the underskirt we're working on. Allow yourself your waistband seam allowance. The same as whatever you did for the other pattern piece. And draw that in using some nice gentle curves. Next, we'll draw in our darts. And now at this point, we're going to follow our green line, which is the underskirt line. And we're going to um, offset that by 1.5 centimeters just to add our seam allowance in at that point. And you can just square that off at this point up here. We're then just going to mark on at the cross points here where the button needs to be attached onto this underskirt. Our grain line follows the center front line. Mark on your notches where your hip line is, just as a nice reference. And then we're gonna label this as this is our wrap skirt. This is our underskirt. And we're just gonna cut one right side of fabric facing up. We're now gonna cut that out. Okay, so our skirt back piece has no alterations to it. We're literally just going to draw the hemline wherever you did the hemline for the front. And then we're just gonna mark in the darts, do our standard seam allowance and off we go. Now I'm just using a piece of um, tracing paper, which is off cut from when I was doing the front. My tracing paper is really wide, so <laughs> there's often a bit left over at the top or the bottom when we're cutting out the pattern pieces. So do try and be sustainable with what you've got and reuse what you can. Um, it's always a good idea. You end up going through so much paper um, when you are pattern drafting. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is just draw in my hemline just to match exactly what we did for the front. For me, that was 18 centimeters above the knee. Center back is just gonna be placed on the fold, so you can just follow that line nice and neatly. Our waist is gonna have our standard 1.5 centimeter seam allowance, unless you've got something else exciting planned. <laughs> and our side seam has our standard 1.5 again. By the time you finish drafting and doing this course, you're gonna be such an expert at darts. <laughs> There's so many darts in each of these um, skirt details, aren't there? I've got six to get through on this pattern piece. Brilliant, so yep, draw in your darts, mark off where your hip line is on the side, or we'll create a nice little notch there as well. And obviously, our, we want to annotate it so that we remember to say that it needs to be placed on the fold at this point. And our grain line is going to run perpendicular to our straight hemline. Perfect, the only thing left to do is just to annotate it and say what this pattern piece is. Wrap skirt, skirt back, cut one on fold. Brilliant, let's cut that out now. Once you've cut out your paper patterns and your fabric pieces, the next thing we're gonna to want to do is to use our pattern uh, transfer paper and our tracing wheel, just to transfer those dart lines and also the button lines onto each of the pattern pieces. In order to do that, we'll just slip our dressmaker's carbon paper underneath our pattern piece so that the line markings are being transferred onto the wrong side of the fabric. Don't forget to also mark out where your buttonhole needs to be. Now you may choose to do this using dressmaker's carbon paper as I'm doing here, or you may want to just mark those out with a fabric, a washable fabric pen. <laughs> Repeat that process for all of the other pattern pieces. Next up, we're just going to sew our darts in place. Start off by pinning them as accurately as you can, using your dart lines as a nice guide. Once you've pinned those so they're really nice and accurate, so we've got the pins going through one side and then also through the other nice and accurately, we're then just going to sew from the top 
all the way down to the point. We're going to start with a stitch length of 2.5 mil up at the top and then as we start to sew towards the point we're just going to reduce the stitch length so that we get a really nice fine tight finish down the bottom. When we hit the bottom we're just going to sew off, we're not going to reinforce the stitch down the bottom and then we'll just tie the ends together down at the bottom. Once you've sewn your darts in place, the next thing just to do is to tie all the loose ends of your thread so that you create a nice, smooth, neat finish to the end of your dart. Once you've finished tying all the ends of your darts, I just want you to press those darts out towards the side seam for each and every one of those pattern pieces. Brilliant. So at this point we've got our two skirt pattern pieces and basically they're going to do something like this, aren't they? So one's going to go over the other but what we want to do now is just to finish this seam here um, and for me I just drafted a 1.5 centimetre seam allowance so I'm literally just going to fold it under by 1.5 so the wrong sides are facing each other and that way I just get a nice clean neat finish all the way up there. So I'm going to pin that in place first but then also on the underside of the garment this bit's wrapping round so again I just want to nicely tuck that under by the 1.5 centimeters that I drafted it by. Now that should be a nice straight right angled line at that point because that's how we drafted it. So let's tuck this one under first by 1.5. So grab your tape measure and just make sure that you're turning that under by 1.5 centimetres. Now for the sake of this series, we're just showing you the basic concepts of how to put everything together. But your seam allowance here, you may want to overlock that and finish that properly. You may want to tuck it under once by 7mm and then tuck it under again by 8mm so that you've got a lovely 15mm, 1.5cm overall and tucked under and reduced from the front. But this is just a technical exercise to demonstrate the technique of sort of doing the wrap skirt. So we're just going to keep that really nice and simple for today's demo. So that's the underskirt done. And now we're just going to do the same for the top skirt, which is this piece. So we've got that there. That's the right side facing up. I'm just going to flip it over so the wrong side is facing up and turn that under by 1.5. Now when we hit the top, don't forget that we've drafted that bit as a bit of a straight line so we will have to fold that over to create that nice neat finish up at the top. Perfect, let's sew that in place now. Okay, lovely. So now we've done our two front pieces, we want to attach those onto the back of the skirt next. So with the right sides together, I'm just going to lay my upper front skirt on top of the back skirt at this point, the right sides together, and I'm just going to pin this side seam in place. You've got your hip notch at this point here, which you can nicely line up as a good little reference at that point. And then we can also pin the other side of the skirt to the other back side seam at this point down here. By pinning them together and stitching them together at the same time, we're just making the whole sewing process a lot more efficient. At this point then you can just press those seam allowances either open or towards the back, whichever one is your preference. At this point, the next thing to do is just to finish off your waistband at the top, however you choose to do that. I've just turned that down by 1.5 centimetres and also finish your hemline however you've chosen to do that. This is looking really cute now, isn't it? It's really sweet. Okay. Now the final little thing we need to do is add these little buttons onto our skirt. So we're going to do that together now. 
So the next thing that we want to do is to uh, do our buttonholes. Now every sewing machine is different. For me, I have this particular buttonhole um, feature, um, which is just gonna attach onto my sewing machine. For you, you may well have a completely different uh, way of creating your buttonholes and buttons. You do what you know how to do with your sewing machine. For me, I'm just gonna pop my button in the bottom of my buttonhole foot, remove my standard foot, and click that in place. And then change the setting on my sewing machine as well so that it's doing a buttonhole foot. Now the first thing that we want to do is we want to do the button on the outside of the skirt. So we've got the markings on the inside of where we want that buttonhole to go. However, we've not got it on the front, which is where we want to be able to see it. So I'm just going to transfer those points using a washable pen onto the right side of my fabric, just like that. Perfect. So I want my buttonhole to start at that point. On my machine, it starts at this end and then it kind of works its way back and comes back up again. Yours may well do something different, so you do whatever your machine needs to do. Let's just pop that in and off we go. I really love it when it does that. So our buttonhole on the wrap on the front is now completely done. We're just gonna repeat that process on the outer skirt on the other side, by the other side seam. So we've got our, our marking here for where it needs to be. This will be the far end at that point. Just transfer that marking. It should be running something like that. And this time I'm gonna start my buttonhole at that end because that's the critical point. I know that that's where the, my button is going to be placed on the underside of the skirt. So we've got two lovely buttonholes at this point here. I'm now just going to put a safety pin through the fabric at one end like that. I'm going to grab my unpicker tool and poke it through the other end of the fabric at this end and just really carefully scrape it down to open up that buttonhole just like that. And our needle at the other end is helping ensure that we're not gonna cut all the way through it. So let's do the same at the other end down here. Just pop your unpicker in there and very carefully just send it across. Our next task is simply just gonna to be to do some hand sewing. So grab your needle and thread it, and tie some knots down at the end. And let's just mark a point where we know this button needs to go. So on the wrong side of our fabric, we should have a nice little marker that tells us exactly where the button's going to go, which is there. Just going to poke my needle through so that I've got a nice reference on the other side. And I'm just gonna draw that in at that point. With the right side of the fabric facing up, push your needle down into your fabric. Bring it back up again, and at this point, you've now got the knot on the right side of the fabric. But when we grab our button, that's gonna hide the knot, which means that we're gonna get a nice neat finish on the inside as well. Now at this point, just continue to sew your button in place. I've just used a really nice contrasting button so that you can really clearly see it in the demo, but I'm sure you guys have got some incredible buttons in your stash for just for this type of thing. It's a really nice idea actually to do a feature button for a wrap skirt like this, especially if your fabric's quite plain, um, it will give it a really nice sort of detail. You could even do like a number of buttons along the waistline uh, so that it becomes like a feature, you know, like three buttons across here, um, which would give it a really cool little feature. But, um, and also probably even more expandable if you happen to change size, <laughs> which a lot of us do. <laughs> Once you've finished sewing your button, just tie off your thread in whatever method you like to do. And then we're just going to repeat that process and put the button on the other side as well. Beautiful, okay, so we've now finished our lovely wrap skirt. We've put some gorgeous little buttons on. It's gonna look super cute when it's all put on. So I'm gonna pop that on and show you what it looks like. Let's go for it. 
So here we have the wrap skirt. This is the one with two little buttons on either side at the waist up here and a nice diagonal wrap going straight down. This is a really simple, cute skirt. I would love to make this up in denim. It's gonna be so much fun to sew this in loads of different versions. So just nice and simple, nothing complicated. Looks good, eh? <laughs> So a huge well done for completing your wrap skirt. I hope you really enjoyed the process. I've had loads of fun drafting that out with you today and talking you through the process step by step. As ever, we'd love to hear from our Minerva Maker community. So please do feel free to pop your comments uh, below the video. We'd love to read all of those and hear back from you guys in the community. And please do post pictures of your skirt. If you're following this series, we'd absolutely love to see all the fun things that you're making with it and all the creativity that you've got going. So thank you for joining me today. I hope you've really enjoyed it. I will see you next time. Bye.